Well, I think we're going to uh, we're going to get started. We'll allow some uh, other folks to just kind of slide in here when they they get here. Uh, so it's uh, good to to be able to chat with everybody here. Uh, we are extraordinarily excited about getting back uh, to having uh, in-person worship services here at Living Water. This has been a very, very lonely place uh, for the last uh, three plus months or so. So uh, we, I know you guys are excited. I want you to know that, that your staff is extremely excited about that. Uh, in order to start out, I got to say thank you. Uh, you guys have, and ladies have been so incredibly uh, gracious to us and uh, patient over the last 90 days as we tried to figure out how to transition this whole thing to uh, being done virtually. It's uh, been quite a, quite a challenge. Uh, our, our team's done, I, I felt, a, a, a wonderful job. Uh, Pastor Ben and uh, Pastor James and Pastor Paul have uh, really uh, become adept with the technology that we needed and everyone's kind of pivoted along with the balance of our staff. Uh, we've worked uh, people pretty hard. Uh, normally we get some breaks over the, the course of a couple months. So we call them respite weekends where the staff gets a little bit of a break and uh, we haven't had any of those. So uh, everybody is a, a little tired, but we're excited to go. Uh, in order to get started out, I, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, some guiding principles, uh, how we're going to need to operate as a, a church family. It's really how we should operate as a church family all the time, but the reality is how we're really going to need to operate right now. Uh, as you saw in the plan that we sent out, there's a couple passages of scripture that, that we referenced. Philippians 2 is where we're told to consider others better than ourselves, and goes into this beautiful picture of what, what Jesus did for us. And uh, if we're going to do this well, uh, if we're going to come back together well in the midst of not only this virus, but also in the midst of just all of uh, the chaos that's going on in our culture, we're going to have to really focus on thinking of others more importantly than ourselves. And then the second thing I think we need to remember is that passage in Romans 14, which really talks about disputable matters where uh, there are some issues in Christianity and issues in life where there's no right or wrong answer. Uh, one Christian sees it one way, one Christian sees it another way, and uh, certainly the whole issue of, of masks kind of falls into that uh, disputable matters area. So uh, when you combine considering others better than yourself and you consider the whole idea of disputable matters and uh, you just you have to be flexible, and ultimately, uh, we all need to be grace-filled, and we learned that as, as an elder board. Uh, at really no time in the last 20 years of Living Water has our elder board been as challenged uh, as it has been over the last uh, three months. We have a, a pretty diverse elder board team. We're diverse not only uh, age-wise and ethnicity, uh, but we're diverse from various different backgrounds, uh, different experiences. Uh, we've got people from different parts of the country. You know, Pastor Ben's from, from Texas. Pastor uh, Paul is from Florida. Pastor James is from Florida. Uh, some of our elders uh, have come from, well, Al's from Texas, and, uh, you know, Michael, uh, Bowden uh, works down in Maryland. He's in higher education. And so we, uh, as we were trying to come to a consensus on what to do, uh, we had some challenging meetings. Uh, one meeting in particular that I didn't really uh, maintain my demeanor as well as I, I should have. And, uh, you know, I needed to get, uh, you know, basically uh, kindly taken behind the woodshed for lack of a better, better term. And, uh, so we, but we, we have come to a, a unanimous agreement about opening up and uh, really I'm just grateful to, to the leadership of, of Michael and uh, our past leaders, uh, Ron and Tom, uh, that we could come together with, with a plan here. And so uh, as you come back on, on campus, there, there's a couple things that are, are gonna happen here. Uh, interactions with people, 
are going to be going to be different. Some people are huggers and handshakers, and they're going to want to hug and handshake. And I'm a hugger and a handshaker. Uh, and I know that there are others who aren't huggers and aren't handshakers normally, and especially during this time, uh, people aren't necessarily huggers. And so uh, I think one of the things that we, we need to do is we need to default on the idea that people may not want to have a handshake or people may not want to be hugged. And so if you want to give someone a hug, you probably need to ask, hey, is it okay uh, for me to give you a hug? If you want to shake someone's hand, you probably need to ask, hey, is it okay if I shake your hand? And, and the person who's on the receiving end of that uh, is going to need to be bold enough to say, you know what, I'm not really comfortable with a hug or a handshake right now. I really appreciate that. Uh, we are making up some uh, name tags that uh, basically say uh, no hugs and handshakes, please. It's just kind of a nice little thing that will give people who aren't comfortable saying no uh, can actually stick that on, on their shirt. Um, <clears throat> But one of the things that, that we want to do is we want to treat you like adults. I think one of the things that's been frustrating through this whole time for me is in a lot of ways I felt like uh, decisions were made where I was not getting treated like an adult. Uh, and uh, we're, we're going to treat uh, all of you uh, like adults. Uh, we want you to decide on what service that you go to. We want you to decide on whether you stay home and uh, watch things through live stream uh, for a while. We want you to decide whether you engage in our kids program when we reopen or not. Uh, we want you to decide how you engage with one another in the, in the parking lot and, and when we're outside on, on Saturday evenings. That, that's, that is ultimately your responsibility. We're, we're gonna work hard to make this place safe we're gonna work hard uh, to be kind to people and, and care for people, uh, but ultimately uh, your health is your responsibility and uh, we're gonna encourage you to, to live out that responsibility. So uh, with that said, let me talk a, a little bit about how uh, the services are gonna work. Uh, we've decided that we're gonna have, go back uh, to all three services, uh, we're gonna keep uh, our Saturday, we're going to do our Saturday night service uh, outdoors. We're going to do that through uh, the month of June. If things go well, we may just continue doing that. Uh, because we're outside, uh, we're going to meet on the west side of uh, our building uh, over in the big grassy area that's just kind of past the, the playground. Uh, basically, you'll be looking up the hill uh, are looking towards the hill where the old circle school building is. Uh, Pastors Ben and I and Mike Bongo will be preaching from a, a trailer uh, that we use in the uh, festival. I've got to call John Nagy and make sure he brings that trailer, by the way. Just thought about that. Uh, and so we'll be facing uh, towards the, uh, the old Har the Harrisburg Mall, basically. Uh, so there's going to be a ton of room for you to uh, spread out. We're going to ask that you bring your own chairs, uh, you bring your own blankets to, to sit on. Uh, we're going to keep the service uh, to 60 minutes so uh, that the kids aren't like losing uh, their mind. We'd also ask you to uh, bring some kind of writing instrument with you and uh, to bring your own Bibles too. Uh, when you arrive, uh, we'd like you to park in the lower parking lot uh, the lower parking lot probably is ultimately going to get fi filled up. Uh, we're going to take a little survey and a little bit of time to figure out how many people will be uh, attending what services. But we ask you to, to come into the lower parking lot and fill that first and then we'll go up top. And you'll want to park in the, uh, the not the parking lot in front of the main building, but kind of the long, narrow parking lot that's to the right side of the building as you're looking at it from the top. And uh, once you get here, uh, you're going to notice that there are going to be uh, two uh, small pop-up tents that are set up with uh, white tables underneath them. Uh, that's where you're going to find uh, the information that you're going to need for the service. Uh, that, that information is going to be a song lyric sheet and uh, also a communication card and a, an offering envelope. 
and uh, it'll all be put in a little package. It'll be inside of a big red uh, bag, basically, and uh, we'll have you go and uh, pick uh, that particular thing up. Uh, actually, there'll be two song sheets in it that are identical in case your family uh, needs a, a second song sheet. Uh, we're going to continue doing the communication cards, and the reason we're doing that is the communication cards are how we post attendance at Living Water, and uh, it's based on your attendance, what your status is in our computer system as to whether you're a regular attender, an occasional attender, an infrequent attender, or that you've dropped out, basically. And uh, when we don't get attendance posted, what happens is you fall out of those categories and you no longer receive email correspondence with us. So if you're not getting emails from us or any other correspondence and you come regularly, it's probably because you haven't been filling out a communication card. It's also the way that we can collect uh, prayer requests. Uh, a lot of you are giving your offering uh, online now, so the offering envelope may be superfluous, but we wanted to put one of those in there for you too. And uh, considering we're uh, handing you an offering envelope and a, a communication card, then you probably need to know uh, that we're gonna take an offering. And uh, the reason that we're uh, going to take an offering is because we believe that, that that's an act of worship. We could have put a box in the back somewhere and had you just toss the envelope in there or whatever, but we really believe that, that corporate offering is an act of worship. So we're gonna station uh, four staff members in each one of the quadrants. Basically, you pick your, picture a big four square uh, playground facility, and uh, there'll be one person in each one of those quadrants. And during the service, uh, we're gonna ask you to get up and just uh, drop it into the, the worship basket. Basket. You won't be touching anything about the card except the card that you uh, had filled out. And uh, once we take uh, the offering, uh, we'll be off to uh, the message and a, a closing song. All of it will take about a half hour. I mean, excuse me, about an hour. And uh, and then we'll wrap the service up. Now, we have been on uh, a couple of different. Uh, webinars with various churches that have already opened up and uh, some of those churches have done outdoor services and what they've discovered is people are very very happy to see one another and uh, they very quickly uh, decided to start hanging out after the service and connecting with one another and uh, so I imagine that's going to happen here at Living Water kids start playing together etc and uh, you just got to realize that's probably a natural tendency of people not seeing one another for a long period of time. And uh, so that's probably going to happen uh, here at, uh, at Living Water, too. So we just want to want to prepare you uh, for that. If you if you choose not to come to the Saturday night service, uh, we're going to have the nine and eleven o'clock services that are available to you in the worship room. We'll continue to stream the nine o'clock service. Uh, so that you can watch that from home if you're more comfortable at home. If uh, you decide that you're gonna to come to the 9 a.m. or 11 a.m. service, uh, for the first couple of weeks, we're gonna ask you to park in the upper parking lot and uh, we're gonna keep the lower lot uh, shut off and the lower level shut off because we're not gonna have kids programs right out of the chutes. Uh, you'll come in through the main doors that are actually, Pastor James, why don't we run that video right now and I'll just kind of talk our way through that. We shot a little video showing you how things are going to happen here. Okay, so here you are. You're approaching the main doors. Uh, there'll be one person there that's going to open the main door for you. You won't have to open it. Those inner doors are going to be open. Uh, you will come in, and uh, the restrooms will be off to your left. Uh, they're going to be open. They'll be clean. If you look to your right here, uh, you're going to notice that uh, there'll be a little hand sanitizing station there. We're trying to get more and more hand sanitizer. It's still a precious commodity. Uh, when you come to uh, over here where you normally sit and have coffee, we've shut those areas down. Uh, we'll look at reopening those areas once uh, we turn to, to green. Uh, but you're not going to be able to just kind of congregate over there. It breaks my heart that we can't do that. I love spending time with people. I love watching everybody interact, but uh, currently we're just not able to do that. Uh, if we keep going uh, to, the, to the right here, 
You'll see also that uh, off to the left, we have blocked off uh, access to uh, where the coffee and the snacks were. Uh, we're not gonna have that for the time being. The elevator is still available uh, for folks who need to get up and down stairs once we get the kids ministry going. Uh, when you turn to your right here, uh, you will encounter another person who is uh, going to be a greeter. They're gonna have gloves on and a mask. They'll be handing out uh, the offering envelope if you need it, and also they'll be handing out your communication card. Again, we ask you to bring a pen. Uh, if you don't bring pens, we'll have some available, uh, but it would be better if you could bring a pen. As you can see, we've pulled out every other row in uh, the worship room. That leaves us, I'm gonna have Pastor Ben knows the count. Uh, Pastor Ben, can you chime in here for a second and tell them the count of chairs that we've got to work with? Yes, sir. So I think there's 262 uh, chairs in the, are in the room. Um, <clears throat> and if you if you leave a, a space between every family of what we were saying, two chairs on every row, then that would leave about 197 people. That's about what it would be. So that, that should work well uh, in the beginning here. Uh, additionally, we are going to be uh, seating people. Uh, so you need to know that we're going to be seating you. Uh, we have some rows in the back that are reserved for our more senior citizens and also for families with young kids who may need to get them up and go into the restroom or whatever. Uh, so you can see that's the, the situation. A lot of room in the worship room. We're grateful that we've got the size of building that we have to work with. Uh, once the service ends, uh, you'll be dismissed. Uh, row by row, we're going to ask you to just go out through these doors here that are propped open. You'll see that we've cordoned off uh, that entire area and also the downstairs area. Again, we're not going to start kids' ministries right out of the chutes. So uh, for the first couple of weeks, there won't be any need to go downstairs. And then finally, you'll make a right and uh, head out these doors uh, into the parking lot. If for some reason we overflow the upper parking lot and have to open the lower parking lot, we'll make some transitions then. But we don't think that that is actually going to uh, be the case. Uh, when you do arrive, uh, we're going to ask you to make your way right into the worship room rather than congregate in the lobby initially. Uh, again, we're just trying to, to be flexible and uh, we're trying to make sure that we create as safe an environment as we uh, possibly can for you. Uh, so let's, uh, let's talk uh, about children's ministry a little bit, Pastor James. I'll let you take that. Maybe just take three or four minutes to talk about the game plan with uh, children and student ministries and VBS. Yeah, so that's a lot to try and uh, tackle. We'll give you uh, five minutes. Okay, all right, fair enough. Um, so you know, I have to say, we, um, you know, like Pastor Mike had said uh, just a moment ago, uh, I want to express, um, you know, my gratefulness and thankfulness to all of our uh, volunteers and to, you know, you as um, parents and families uh, for just the phenomenal uh, opportunities we've had to continue relationships with, with children and with students over the last, um, you know, several months. Um, you know, that's continued through Zoom calls and through um, uh, you know, online videos and things like that through our YouTube, and you know, we've received really good feedback about that. But of course, we're excited to uh, be able to uh, be meeting live as soon as we can. Um, basically, what we want to do though is we want to uh, do that as safely as we possibly can, but also uh, be meeting the needs of families as they are uh, coming here to church. And so, um, you know, ideally, what we want to try and do is uh, within the next couple of weeks. Um, start with our nursery and preschool, uh, um, opening those up on a very limited basis. Um, and what that'll look like is uh, we'll be sending out information to um, parents of those age groups uh, for them to register each week to attend uh, classes. And we're going to limit those classes to about five, um, five children per room. That also means that uh, we're going to need to start um, getting the volunteers all lined up. So if you uh, have been serving in children's ministry, um, you have your clearances, we really want to talk with you. Um, you can uh, contact Ms. Grace. You can sign up for our summer serve, um, and that would be really a, a good way to, to start the process. Um, we'll slowly start adding on um, our kindergarten to second grade, our third to fifth grade, and then finally 
our middle school to high school um, age groups. And that's gonna allow um, you know, us to really focus on uh, those who um, you know, can be part of the children's ministry first. Well, I know our middle school and high school students uh, will really still thrive inside of our, our worship services. Um, you know, the other side of that uh, would be that uh, we want to make sure that everyone knows that regardless of if you're here um, or not, if, if your child is not um, able to be live downstairs for any of the teaching, we are still going to offer our um, Zoom calls uh, for at least uh, until all of our children's ministry starts um, downstairs, our kindergarten to second grade. Um, and then we'll continue our YouTube uh, videos uh, each week. Uh, student ministry, um, you know, we'll continue the Zoom calls and uh, YouTube videos until uh, we are, are all meeting um, downstairs. And, you know, kind of like what Mike had said before, you know, with the summertime, you know, having the Saturday night service, I, I would uh, expect that we're going to continue doing our live, uh, or our, excuse me, our recorded YouTube videos through the summertime um, so that, you know, if you're here in person or away, um, we can definitely take care of, uh, of that. Now, one of the, one of the things um, that you know, we, we wanted to make sure uh, we did, um, our, our purpose and vision for Vacation Bible School every year is to really be the light of Jesus Christ uh, to the community around us. And um, we really struggled with what this was going to look like this year, uh, because the last thing we wanted to do is, um, you know, not, not uh, you know, be able to have something for um, the children in our community to be able to, to learn about who Jesus Christ is. And uh, for us to, to be able to uh, just do whatever we can to help them and encourage them uh, to know and to, to love him the same way that, that you and I do. So, um, you know, I, I, I am so thankful for Miss Victoria and the great job that she's done. Um, this is really right up her alley. She served for many years uh, with Child Evangelism Fellowship and um, she came to me and she's like, hey, let's, let's do this thing. And uh, so we're excited. We're going to be um, creating um, some videos and creating some boxes for you to be able to take and do uh, community VBS with uh, people in your neighborhood. Um, and if you have, uh, if you have kids at home, um, I would, I would probably say that um, the, some of the first kids that uh, your children are spending time with are the ones right next door because they're right next to each other. And so we just want to encourage you to be able to, um, you know, to, to share the life of, uh, share your life and, and the hope that we have in Jesus Christ uh, with them. And so we, was, we just want to empower you to do that. Um, you might say, well, you know, I don't really know how to do that. We're going to offer training. We're going to give you all of the supplies that you would need um, to be able to pull this off. And so we're really, really excited about uh, what this looks like. Um, in fact, as we were, we were looking at options, um, there are some major churches um, throughout our country that this is all they do for VBS. Um, so I'm excited just to see you know, what this, what this looks like um, for, um, uh, for, for us to be able to pull this off for this year. And, um, you know, we're excited to, to be able to um, host VBS here soon, uh, maybe even next year. Thanks, Pastor James. Uh, Pastor Ben, why don't you go ahead and speak just a little bit about what's going on uh, with small groups. And then I want to deal with uh, the whole issue of, of masks and things like that. I forgot, I missed that part. And, uh, and then we want to be able to take uh, some questions. I've got some that were already sent in. There's one question waiting for us to answer. And if other folks have questions, we want to be able to answer those. Sure, Pastor Mike, thank you. Um, well, good evening to everyone. Thank you for taking time out of your evening to spend some time with us to find out uh, about church reopening plans for this weekend. We really appreciate you doing that. And uh, as has already been stated, we're extremely thankful uh, for your faithfulness to God, your love for Jesus, uh, and your participation with our church family in a variety of ways uh, through uh, supporting our live stream, through giving, and then, then being members of our small groups. Uh, some of you have been faithfully participating in small groups throughout this entire time through uh, Zoom meetings. Uh, some of you have been leading groups, and, uh, and so we're extremely thankful for that, that you're staying active in your uh, spiritual growth and, uh, and, and in the development of others in their walk with Jesus. So uh, we've now moved into the yellow phase. And so some of our groups have resumed to meet in person, uh, at least on site at the church. Uh, I'll be contacting the small group leaders tomorrow uh, by email just to let them know uh, that this is an opportunity if they're interested. And of course, as Pastor Mike has already stated, uh, you guys are adults. Uh, so we'll be giving them some encouragement and some guidance, but ultimately they'll need to, you guys will have to make some decisions uh, as a group members together. 
uh, as we do with most things as it comes to groups. So uh, we believe groups are essential and part of our spiritual development. And so we encourage you, if you're not in a group, to get in one. That would be a wonderful way to continue to, uh, your walk with Christ during this time. We need the encouragement of other believers uh, during difficult times to help us stay uh, connected to Christ and to one another. That's about it, Pastor Mike. All right. Thanks, Pastor Ben. Uh, yeah, as it relates with masks, uh, the Saturday night service, as I indicated uh, in the uh, information I sent out to you, is, is going to be a mask optional. Uh, we encourage people to wear them, but again, that's a, a choice that, that you get to make. Uh, if you're uncomfortable uh, with being in a place where people don't have uh, the masks on, uh, then the Saturday night service is probably one that you don't want to participate in. And that's why we have the 9 and 11 o'clock services on Sunday. Uh, both of those services are going, or, and really any time that you're in the church building uh, on the weekends, even Saturday evenings, if you're coming in to use the restroom, uh, you'll need to have a, have a mask on. Uh, but on Sunday mornings, uh, we're going to require that people wear masks. Uh, kids that are six and under, I believe, uh, we said do not have to wear masks, and we just felt like some of the smaller kids, probably not just a super practical thing for them. Uh, so the, the littlest kids probably will not have masks on, depending on what their parents choose or not choose. Uh, but anyone above that is going to be required to, to have a mask on unless uh, they have some type of medical reason that you can't. Uh, wear a mask, uh, you know, maybe, maybe you uh, had some kind of throat surgery or something like that or whatever, or uh, maybe, I don't know, C CPOD or something that's difficult breathing and a mask makes it more difficult. Obviously, we'll make exceptions to, to those rules. Uh, folks who uh, come on uh, the week on Sunday mornings and, and refuse to wear a mask, uh, we'll have the, the difficult uh, conversation of asking them uh, to wear a mask. If they choose not to, we're going to kindly ask them uh, to not worship with us on, on Sunday mornings and to come on Saturday nights. Uh, if you forget a mask, uh, we're going to have some backup ones here. Uh, we've got a limited supply. We'd prefer to use those for uh, guests if, uh, who just you know, simply don't know about the rule. Uh, the other thing, uh, we're going to ask you that if you are feeling ill in any way uh, to not participate on that particular weekend. Uh, if you've got a, a, a runny nose or a persistent cough or, or persistently sneezing or running a low-grade fever or anything like that, we would ask that you simply choose to uh, use the live stream for that particular weekend. Uh, and if you've been in contact uh, with someone who uh, has experienced COVID over the, you know, the, the incubation period, basically, the last 14 days, uh, we would ask that you uh, choose not to attend. Obviously, we're going to have medical personnel who have been in contact with, with those folks, but who have been following very careful protocols. I and mean, we're not going to keep our medical people from coming uh, to services uh, because we can be confident that they had been uh, self-protecting self themselves in, in the basic equipment. So uh, let's uh, go ahead and uh, we're gonna open it up to some questions. Uh, I'm gonna deal with the ones that got sent in uh, a couple days ago and, uh, and then we'll let you type in any questions that you might have. We also have a little poll for you too. Do you wanna bring that poll up now, Pastor? James? Yeah, or? yeah, I can go ahead and do that. And the best way for us to, uh, to get those questions answered is for you to type into the uh, Q&A uh, box uh, that's available for you on this, uh, rather than us opening up, um, you know, audio um, questions and stuff like that. And that's just down at the bottom. So, correct. yeah, uh, there, there's a two-question poll that we're going to have. Uh, it's going to, you'll help us be able to understand uh, what the spread is going to be between services. So, give you a, a little time to uh, go ahead and uh, answer those. In the meantime, I'll answer a couple questions that got sent in. Uh, one question was thoughts about van and bus transportation. Uh, at the present time, we are not going to uh, offer uh, van and bus transportation to Living Water. We're waiting to 
uh, until it gets into the green to, to reevaluate that. Uh, if you are someone who's trying to get the living water who doesn't have uh, a ride, uh, have the ability to come here and you typically use the van, uh, we want to know about that at least. And perhaps we can find someone who's close to you who uh, would be interested in, in perhaps picking you up or something along those lines. Uh, but we're just not in a position right now to be able to do the bus transportation. Uh, there was a question about how the upholstered chairs are going to be cleaned and how often. And uh, will the chairs be spaced so two empty chairs will cover six feet? Uh, the two empty chairs uh, don't cover quite six feet. It's about five feet. Uh, but again, uh, the, uh, Dr. Levine, uh, when we had a conversation with, with uh, Dr. Levine about the spacing of six feet, uh, the answer was that was a number that we just kind of made up. Uh, so it could be five, it could be seven. Uh, so we feel like two, two chairs between people is uh, an adequate space laterally. Uh, there's easily six feet around you in every other area there. So uh, that's what we're, uh, that's the game plan <clears throat> as far as uh, the spacing. Uh, the, cleaning the chairs, uh, quite, a, quite a challenge. We're getting mixed information from the CDC as far as how far long this virus lasts on uh, different materials. Some, are, some of the guidance was, hey, it could last for a couple days. Then they came out and said, hey, I don't think it's going to last but a couple hours. Then they changed their mind. So it's, it's kind of uh, hit and miss uh, how that will work. Uh, we have had someone kindly donate to us a very uh, nice, very expensive uh, misting system uh, that we are going to uh, attempt to use. Uh, we're not going to be able to do that between services. Uh, we are going to seat people uh, every other row initially uh, during the first service. And then if it fills up and we got to put people in each row, and that's after all the other chairs have been taken out. Uh, but that's one of the ways that we're going to try to, to handle that. Uh, we are going to have hand sanitizer here, but it's hard to get. Uh, we would encourage you to bring your own if you have it. Encourage you to bring some wipes too uh, with you. Uh, I think that would be uh, helpful uh, for you. If you bring like Clorox wipes and things like that, you're going to want to, you know, you want to wipe off a hard surface. That's fine. Please don't wipe uh, the Clorox on the chairs, or we're going to have a, a disaster on our hands. Uh, with the chair, so you're gonna just have to trust us on us doing our best to, to maintain the, the cleanliness of the chairs. Uh, as far as they asked us about the offering baskets, pens, and free Bibles, the Bibles have been put away. Uh, the offering baskets are not gonna get passed. Uh, we will have some pens available. We're gonna ask you to, to take uh, the pen with you if you actually need it. And uh, they ask about sanitizing between the 9 and 11 service. We're not gonna be able to do that. We will be wiping down handles and rails between services. The bathrooms are gonna be getting a, a, a cleaning between services also. Uh, but our goal is to have you not touch anything. I mean, that's basically uh, our goal is to have you come in and not have to, to touch anything. So those were the questions that were uh, mailed in to us. And then it looks like we got one question here. So hey, actually, I mean, before, we, before we jump into that, I know one of the things that we had talked about too was uh, the bathroom and how we, how do we handle, you know, people obviously needing to go to the bathroom during a service. Um, when we were showing the video, did you talk about, um, you know, what that would look like? I, I did not talk about that. Okay. I mean, you know, I, and I may be just jumping ahead. I think what we had talked about was like trying as best we could to have, you know, a limited amount of people go, uh, back in there at a time. Um, so, you know, again, that's self-policing, you know, just kind of being, you know, mindful and careful. Yeah, and that's, I, and I think that's actually what's going to happen. Uh, I think people are going to be pretty cognizant of, of how they actually interact with other people, so. Yep, uh, so I, I see two questions here. Um, one, I, I jumped the gun and said we answered it live, and so I want to make sure that I actually go back and answer it. Okay. Uh, and that was, one from uh, Jen Nardis um, talking about how, how will the communication cards, um, as far as taking attendance, like if people decide that they want to stay home and that's what they feel comfortable with, 
you know, how, how are we going to make sure that they don't fall off the emails mm -hmm. and the text messages and th those things? Yeah, uh, well, right now, the way that we've done it is we, we opened up the threshold of how long uh, you can miss before you get switched down into a, a different attendance stage. So we used to have things uh, based on a six a rolling six months. We ro opened it up to a rolling nine months right now. Uh, so that's one of the ways... Uh, that we are trying to identify people who are trying to keep people on there. Uh, Jen, the other thing you can do is just simply send an email to Eleanor and say, hey, Eleanor, I, I watched the, the live stream this weekend. Uh, please mark me down kind of thing. And Eleanor will go in and pump you into the system real quick. Uh, hold on, let me move uh, my screen here. Pastor Ben, is that all right? I just said that. I, I had your face covered, so you might have been frowning when I said that. So. Okay, so uh, yeah, that would be a great way. Just uh, you send in to Elnor at livingwatercc.com. Hey, it was me and Wyatt, we're watching it. And uh, we'll add you into the, the database as attending. So uh, that's probably the, the easiest and cleanest way to do that. And uh, the second question here is, uh, the back entrance door in the new section gonna remain locked at the beginning and open at the end of the service. Yeah, that's exactly how it's going to work. They'll be they'll be closed. Uh, the only way that you'll be able to get in the building is through the main entrance doors under the the covering, and uh, and then those door those opposite doors will be locked, and then they'll get propped open for you to be able to leave. So that that's a great question. Thanks for and, clarifying that. And and if I can clarify again, just just a reminder. I mean those those doors are fire safe, so in case there was some type of emergency, we were able yeah. to get out. You can go so right out. There. They're locked from the outside, not from the inside. Yeah. And yeah, the, the Saturday evening service question is, it, is it behind the playground? Uh, yeah, that's exactly right. If you're, if you're looking at the playground, uh, right past the playground is kind of a grove of sycamore trees. Uh, there's a big grassy area. That's where it's actually going to be. Uh, there's a couple uh, old stone retaining walls. So uh, I'll be backed up against the old stone retaining wall, looking out towards uh, the the exit of the church, basically looking down towards Dairy Street. And, yeah, uh, and so that's that's the game plan. That's where you're going to be located. You can't miss it. The tents will be there. So yeah, and you're you're kind of looking up the hill um, if you're going to be you know looking at the platform. Yeah, that's right. And then uh, still greeting teams, and who's going to be doing the seating? Uh, well, here's the game plan. That's a great question. Uh, you think we should have paid for that one there? I think Ken's uh, going to get back and serve. What do you think, Pastor? Yeah, we, we, we need people to come back and serve. I mean, that is mm -hmm. uh, everything that we're going to do is totally predicated about upon that. Our entire children's program is going to be predicated upon people serving. But as far as uh, greeters are going uh, to be, uh, yeah, we're going to continue to, to need volunteers for the greeters in the first couple of weeks. Uh, we basically have told the staff, you might as well plan on being at church for the balance of the weekend because we're going to need you. But as soon as people are like, hey, I'll be willing to help uh, greet again, I'll be willing to help seat, we're going to enlist you to do that. And so if you uh, want to uh, get back to greeting. If you would email Mike Bongo, it's Mike B at livingwatercc.com. Again, Mike B at livingwatercc.com. Say, hey, Mike, I'm ready to greet again. Uh, we'll put you in a, in a particular place, uh, and that'll free up a staff member to be able to, you know, maybe deal with someone who's going to be pushy about a mask or something like that. So, and if uh, I could put in a shameless plug there. We're really going to need to, you know, make sure that we're scheduling our all of our uh, family ministry, um, you know, nursery workers and you know elementary age workers and student ministry workers. Um, you know, if you've if you've been doing that uh, and you're ready to get back in, we would love to have that conversation with you. Um, typically, we we uh, at this point of the, the the year we're talking about this thing called summer serve and asking uh, to give everyone some time off. Um, so. I feel like uh, everybody's really excited about serving, um, you know, just as a matter of when. So we want to know. Um, so you can contact Miss Grace at uh, grace at livingwatercc.com and uh, have that conversation with her. 
Well, that it covers about everything that we wanted to, to cover. I don't see any other questions. If you have another question, you want to pump that uh, puppy in real quick. Uh, oh, when, okay. There's a there's a good one. When do you think we're going to be going uh, going to be going green? Uh, we talked about that today. Uh, my guess is, and again, this is just a an a. a, a, a a wild guess. I mean, more maybe an educated guess, but I, I don't have a uh, direct line to uh, Governor Wolf or not. But uh, my my bet is not this Friday, but I bet in the following Friday he's going to announce that Dolphin County is going to be green for the following Friday after that. Uh, so I would say probably by the end of June maybe the uh, July 4th weekend, perhaps, uh, that things are going to be green and uh, we'll, we'll ultimately uh, loosen some stuff up more. The Elder Board hasn't really had a conversation about exactly what's going to happen when things are green. Uh, hopefully, we're going to get this virus uh, squared away and uh, we can get back to doing what we... Uh, like to do so um, unless there are any other questions oh oh thank you I uh, an anonymous okay. attendee said uh, thank you living water pastors and staff uh, for all that you do hey it's it's our honor you our church family is our rock stars I mean this has been you, you you've made what's a really hard situation such a blessing especially with the the giving. We didn't have to lay anybody off. We were able to continue doing the things we were doing. And so we're thankful for that. Uh, we got another question. Will gloves and masks be provided to greeters to use or our own? Uh, we're going to provide gloves. We have the gloves here. Uh, we've got limited masks. So if you can bring your own mask, that would be good. Uh, but we've got uh, plenty of gloves uh, here right now. So that's that question. Anything else anybody has? We appreciate the the the, uh, the vote. We got about sixty percent of you are going to say you're going to plan on being here uh, this coming weekend, which we're excited about. And almost fifty percent say you're going to be outside on Saturday night. Oh, one other qu one other thing: Saturday nights, uh, we are going to be outside as long as we're not getting wet. So if it's cold, we're going to be outside. If it's windy, we're going to be outside. Uh, if it is 105 degrees, we're going to be outside. Uh, the only thing that will keep us inside is rain. And if, uh, if it does rain, uh, we want to, uh, we're going to move inside, but it will require that you have a mask if we're inside. So I uh, just wanted to remind you that. It looks like uh, Pat Brown put a note and said, bring your own chair. That's yeah, right. please do that. Uh, I think we're going to have a great time outside. I, I have already been in communication with our police chief. He is well aware of what we're doing and uh, it's totally, you know, feels good about it. And so we're excited about that. Talked to one of the neighbors today who was voting and told him what we're doing. He said, hey, that's going to be a great thing. So uh, thank you. Get ups. Uh, what are the other poll? Oh, okay. Yeah. Do they not see it, Pastor James? Uh, no, they're... I mean, we can share uh, what yeah, it is. Yeah, share right. the poll results. I'm sorry. Right. I thought you guys were seeing it. All right. Um, while we're, we're, let's give everybody a second to answer those questions if they haven't. Um, Ann, Ann Mahalik was asking about afterward. Are we going to continue afterward? Yeah, and, and uh, we're, we're going to figure out a way to do that. I'm just not sure how we're going to do that yet. Uh, by the time we get done with doing uh, – doing a Saturday night service and two Sunday morning services. Uh, I'm about spent by then. And I'm sure anybody who's, who's preaching would probably concur with that. So uh, what we're thinking is maybe doing something on Saturday night after uh, the service kind of similar to uh, you know, we used to, ha used to have uh, Living Water Live on Saturday nights. Maybe we'll do an afterward on Saturday evening services uh, in person. We're not sure, but it has worked out well. Uh, that, 
Uh, Marlene has asked, will there be wipes in the bathroom so that we're able to wipe the can candle or the counter and handles done when we're done? Marlene, we are struggling to find any kind of wipes. We are struggling to find hand sanitizer. If we can get those, we'll provide them. Uh, but I don't know that we're going to be able to provide them. What I would encourage is, you know, when you're in the, in the restroom, uh, liberally use the paper towels that we have. Uh, when you go to open the door, use the paper towel to open the door. Keep the door propped open with your foot. As soon as we can get on to uh, wipes, we, we would, we'll provide them, but we're struggling right now. So, All right, Pastor Ben or James, I mean. All right, here, here are our shared results. So it looks like we have a good amount of people that are uh, wanting to jump back in with, with us in worship this weekend. And, uh, you know, of course, Pastor Mike, yeah, as we've talked over the last couple of weeks, you know, the, the right answer about when it is is grace. Um, yeah. lots, of, lots and lots of grace uh, because we love our brothers and sisters and, you know, there's not a right answer as to when um, everyone has their own convictions. And, you know, this is not something that, you know, scripture gives us direction on. Uh, the, the other thing that I would say too, uh, and then we can wrap up is uh, <clears throat> the, if, if you're someone who wants to stay home and, uh, you know, refrain from, from coming to worship services right now, we still want to be available to you. Uh, if, if you would need like a home visit or something along those lines by a pastor that would, you would like to come and pray with you or pray with you on the phone, uh, just to talk, we're here for you. Uh, we don't want you to be, you know, isolated, isolated. Uh, so just know that, uh, Jennifer's telling us big bottles of hand sanitizer as of Friday at Gabe, Gabe. So well, Pat take, Brown, on the take, webinar. take no, note of that. What's that? So don't oh, I shouldn't have told everybody. Hey, Jen, Jen was not telling the truth there. Forget that. Press the undo button. Uh, and uh, yeah, if uh, you want to send us masks through Amazon to the church, yeah, we'll, we'll happily take them. Uh, very much so. So uh, I think that is about it. So uh, uh, Pastor Ben, would you mind uh, unmuting and praying for us? And uh, oh, uh, just one other quick thing. Uh, you should have seen an email from me uh, for this coming Saturday at 11 o'clock on the Capitol steps. Uh, we're going to be uh, partnering with the Church Ambassador Network to have a, uh, a prayer service uh, on the Capitol steps. It's not, a, it's not a rally. It's not a protest. It is prayer and scripture reading on the steps to pray for our, our community, uh, to pray for the people in our community, to pray for the leaders and the police. Uh, and uh, there's a, a great uh, group of uh, churches that are gonna be uh, involved with it. Uh, I'm gonna be uh, up on the steps or whatever, along with a number of other people uh, leading the prayer time. So we would love for you to, to join us for that. It goes from 11 to 1230 this coming uh, Saturday. And uh, there's all the information you need is in the email that I sent you. If you have any questions, call the office. And uh, oh, yeah. uh, where should we park? I'm assuming that's for, for Saturday. the Capitol. Yeah, yeah I'm guessing, guessing for Saturday. Yeah, uh, there there's tons of off street or there's tons of on street parking all through there. Uh, the, the meters are shut down on Saturdays, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so yeah, uh, Kathy and I actually, uh, were at the, the rally last evening. We wanted to just simply go and pray, uh, at the rally. And so we went there last night. We easily found a, a parking space, right? Uh, just about a block away from the Capitol. So, uh, and uh, anywhere parking is free now, but not usually on Saturdays. Okay, so Carol said anywhere parking is free now, but not usually on Saturdays. So I think it's gonna be free. If not, bring your credit card. It only costs a couple bucks and our city will be happy to get the money. And I don't know that it's gonna be live stream. That was another question. All right, Pastor Ben, it's all you, buddy. Sure. Well, let's bow together in prayer.
Heavenly Father, we give you thanks. Uh, we thank you for our church family, uh, for the rich blessing that they are uh, to our community, to us as uh, members of the staff, and to one another. Uh, we thank you for the many great stories we've seen and experienced your grace through their, their lives. And I pray for each one of them, Father. We pray for the restarting of our services in person. We thank you that the church has still been gathered through this time but as we seek to, to get back together in person, that you be with us, God, uh, that you watch over us, help us to do that wisely, help us to do that safely. And God, I pray that we continue to move forward uh, in serving you uh, and being a light to the world around us through our uh, displaying, as we've been preaching about these last several weeks, fruits of the spirit. Uh, God, we thank you for that. And I pray, as Pastor Mike said, that we would have understanding and kindness and generosity towards one another, that we'd be humble in our interactions uh, and merciful toward one another, even if we have different points of views about different matters as it pertains to us uh, being in each other's presence again. And uh, God, we uh, pray for your blessing, pray that you would see over the weather, pray that you'd give us good weather in the weeks ahead, on all those days we have service outside, uh, that we may be able to gather outside, God, and be able to, to enjoy your good earth that you've made. I pray that you bless your people, Lord, in their regular lives. For those who have needs, would you please meet them? Thank you for uh, letting them come out tonight and to participate. And we thank you for them responding and uh, Thank you for being able to have this opportunity to util utilize technology to communicate with them. And I pray that you get the word out, Father. Uh, we pray that you're glorified in everything. In Jesus' holy name, amen. 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 Love you guys. Uh, and uh, we will uh, see you this weekend. Praise the Lord. Adios.